Uh, greetings to you all. Uh, this is a continuation to the um, the last video I made, which is titled um, Psalm 2 verses 8, Psalm 2 verses 7 to 8, and now we just continue with um, Psalms 2 verse 8. And verse 8 reads, If you ask me, I will give you the nations as your inheritance. All the people on the earth will be yours. And um, the voice translation reads, uh, The nations will, shall be yours for the asking, and the entire earth will belong to you. So this is the promise that was made to Yeshaya. Uh, God the Son. So, let's just quickly uh, go through um, some some scriptures to give us some um, background to this. Now, we know, um, okay, the question is, the kingdom that will be established at the second coming or after the second coming has, um, will only come when the world has been judged and that is when God has poured out his wrath. And this is in Revelation 17, verses 16 to 21. Um, and it reads um, in part, uh, Then they brought them together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon, um, the seventh bowl. The seventh angel poured out his bowl on the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. There were flashes of lightning, rumbling and crashes of thunder. There was also a great earthquake of a kind that has not occurred since mankind has been on earth. Uh, the great city splits into three parts. The cities of the nations, nations collapsed. Babylon the Great was remembered by God and he gave her the wine filled with his fierce wrath. Every island vanished and the mountains could no longer be found. Massive hailstones, about 100 pounds each, fell on people from the sky and the people blasphemed God because of the plague of, of hail, because the plague was so severe. So, uh, and, and this is what uh, God the Father says to the Son. Um, he says, and until he has subdued, uh, since, until I've subdued all your enemies, uh, that is Babylon and all his satellite uh, states and nations, the world at large, uh, it tells him to sit down, sit back and relax uh, on his throne, so to speak. And in John 5, 17, it reads, But Jesus said then to them, My father never stops working. Uh, he is always and is still working, even on the Sabbath. And so I keep on working, so God is, will not rest until this has been accomplished. Um, the kingdom, uh, is, until he has established his son's kingdom. Psalm 10 110 verses um, for verses 1 to 4 it reads that the Lord said, Sit at my side uh, until I put your enemies under your control. Uh, the Lord will enlarge your kingdom um, and you will rule over your enemies. Your people will join the day of your power. No, the the people will join uh, you on the day of battle. You have been dressed in holiness, splendor, and you have the freshness of a child. The Lord has made a promise, and we will not change his mind. And he goes on to say, uh, you are a priest forever, a priest uh, like Melchizedek. Um, so this is the promise that he made, and he's told him to sit at his right hand until he's established his kingdom. So he's going to deal with his enemies. So now let's look at um, the nations, the question of nations, and the Garden of Eden, and uh, New Jerusalem, and see what we can come, what we can come up with. Okay. So the promise, there's a promise that was made to Adam, which is Eden. That fell through because Eden failed and he lost the uh, 
the real estate and um and then so now i think his successors that strictly speaking will be Jeru, will be yashael that is the nation of what we call israel uh, his chosen people they are the successors to that promise uh, but it came through abraham anyway here we here we go so the the kingdom that will be established uh, at the second coming is an everlasting kingdom and i think this is in revelation 20 22. uh we know that god promised and we also know that god going back in history god promised abraham a vast estate far greater in extent than what josiah was able to bring under his control and uh, but it was later later enlarged a little by under king david's rule uh, but Overall, the the extent of the land that they really said that they managed to bring under dominion is a far cry from the promise of uh, the Garden of Eden or the promise that was made to and the promise that was made to Abraham in Genesis. We you talk uh, Genesis fifteen eighteen. He talks about uh, the state was stretched from the river of Egypt to the great Euphrates. This was repeated in Deuteronomy 1, 7, verse, chapter 1, verse 17, which, which talks again, uh, it's going from the great river to the great Euphrates. The same, uh, it, was re, uh, it was restated again under Joshua, that uh, the land that he had given him also extended from the great river to the great, uh, to the, in the, to the Euphrates in the east, and that's the f that's a vast estate, but no one ever actually came close to it. It was first established in uh, in Genesis, is it one two, to uh, Garden of Eden, um, yeah, Genesis uh, two uh, verses ten to fourteen, a vast estate, and it more or less corresponds to this prop uh, this real estate that is that was prom promised to Abraham and his descendants, and um, and also, by and large, corresponds to the New Jerusalem that comes out of heaven. In terms of the extent uh, of the state, I mean, um, New Jerusalem is 1,000 by 1,500 by 1,500, which is roughly from the Great River to the uh, in Africa to the Euphrates. Um, so that is the state. That's the Garden of Eden, which becomes the. The, the New Jerusalem in Revelation 21, 15 to 21, 1,500 um, miles long, wide, and and wide, long, wide. In fact, it, by, by Genesis, um, by Revelation 21, it becomes a cube. Um, and uh, we know that, and that this is also this is something to do with what was promised um, Abraham because of the the way he honors the twelve apostles and his honor and the uh, the the twelve tribes in terms of giving them being involved. Um, yeah, and the stones that were associated with each tribe, and that they are um, in their foundations um, in the. And they are represented in the 12th case of this cube. So now we come back to, um, so what is clear is that the extent of the real estate uh, from the very beginning, that's the Garden of Eden, um, and uh, through, the, through time, the promise made to Abraham, and eventually uh, with the, um, the New Jerusalem coming up, uh, the coming down from heaven is roughly the, the same uh, real estate in, in extent and it covers but it does not cover the whole earth so there is um, this was which was promised to the Hebrews. Let's, assume, let's say that this is the, the the country this will represent the country of the the Hebrew people um, but there are other nations so it doesn't cover the, it doesn't cover the the does not cover the whole earth there is room for other nations and we'll come to this other nations because we know that they are other nations and uh, God in um, and uh, 
Well, okay, we know that uh, Psalm 2 8 talks about that. I'll give you the peoples of the earth, will give you all the nations on the, of the earth as an inheritance. And all the nations, peoples, tribes, and tongues of all the earth uh, are in this promise that was made to God the Son. And we also know that the Hebrew people, um, as, as we speak right now, that the Hebrew people were scattered throughout the whole world and are still scattered in all the nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues. And we know from the Bible that they, they have no homeland as we speak. That is a fact. And they only, they are going to be gathered when they are gathered. Uh, that's when we know this is going to, they will be established in their homeland, in their new homeland. But they, right now, the Hebrew people do not have a homeland. So we can talk about the whole world comprising the nations, the Hebrew people are in all these nations, all these countries, whatever number they are, 270, whatever it is. But they are amongst, uh, they are in there, but as minorities, they're never a majority. If you look at America, if you look at um, even uh, Israel itself, um, the, the minorities, they're there, and they're always characterized by persecution. That's how you know them. And we know that there are other nations. Um, so all these nations have been bequeathed to God the Son. Um, so we can say that uh, that Eden uh, is for the Hebrews, and the nations and tribes will be assi were assigned their own lands. And we know this from Deuteronomy thirty two seven nine, where it says, "Remember the ancient days. Bear in mind the years of uh, past generations." Ask your father and he will inform you, your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High gave the nations the inheritance, when he divided up mankind, he set up the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the heavenly assembly. But God's allotment, uh, allotment is his people, which is Jacob, Yashem, and he took this as his special uh, possession. So when Israel was uh, was created, that was the only that was God's portion. The others were sent to the, uh, the, the according were sent according to the number of the heavenly assembly, and we know that these were seventy, and uh, we'll, the, the will confirm that again in a little while. And in um, so, and we also know that Yeshaya is David's successor. Yeah, here we go. Jesus, Isaiah 9, 6 to 7 says, A child um, has been born to us. A child has, um, God has given a son to us. He will be responsible for leading the people. Um, his name will be Wonderful Counselor, um, Extraordinary Advisor, Powerful, mighty God, Father, who lives forever, eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the growth, abundance, increase of his rule, dominion, and government, or government, nor to the peace he will bring. He will rule as king on David's throne. So here we are now talking about um, Israel, Yashael the land that was assigned to them. But we mentioned earlier that it, that no longer exists because in 70 AD, the people were kicked out of there and uh, they dispersed and scattered throughout the, the world, or at least that's when the process began, uh, forcibly. Before, whilst they were forced out in Babylon the first um, uh, expulsion, which is what, to Babylon, in uh, in Asia, um, some stayed on when others came back. But in this case, uh, in this one, they were kicked out in that kingdom, and they've not been admitted back to that piece of land. Yet they are still scattered throughout the world. So, uh, so we know that Yeshaya, Yeshaya is the successor of David, and he inherits. He is the king of of Yashael, and we, this was also confirmed by Pontius Pilate when he said, here lies, uh, here is uh, Jesus, the king of the Jews. 
So in Isaiah it says, um, Isaiah 45:23 it reads, "I will make a promise by my own power, and my promise is true. What I say will not be changed or revoked. I promise that everyone will bow before you. Will be bowed. I promise that everyone will bow before me, and will promise to follow me." Uh, this is uh, Isaiah 45:23. Philippians 2.10 says, So that every knee will bow to the name of uh, Yasha, uh, Yashael, no, <clears throat> Yeshaya, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That is um, throughout the whole creation, the whole universe. And Philippians 2, uh, verses 10, 8 uh, to 10, which is really... Uh, a repetition, he says, to capture this part, uh, his suffering. And when he was living as a human being, he humbled himself and was fully obedient to God. And when that, and when that caused his death on the cross, uh, and that caused his death on the cross, so God raised him to the highest place and made his name greater than any other man. Ephesians 1, 20, 1, verses 20 to 22 reads, And God used his power and raised Christ from the dead and put him on his right hand side in the heavenly world. Uh, God, puts, God has put uh, his anointed one over all rulers, authorities, powers, kings, and every other title given and, and, and every other title given, not only in this world, this age, but also in the next, uh, in the new uh, coming age, God has put subjected everything under his power and made him the head over everything for the church, um, which is his body. So we have a salvation plan now. This is, we are told, this is just an indication, uh, we would kind of ran fast forward. Uh, this was a consequence, but for him to get there, there was a sacrifice that was taken. He died for us, and then uh, the salvation plan. And then in Psalm 47 to 8, it reads, Then I said, Look, I have come. It is written about me in the book. My God, I want, I delight, I take pleasure to do what you want to do your pleasure your teaching your teachings your laws are in my heart in hebrews 10 5 reads then i said behold i have come in the volume of the books it is written of me to do your will that's the phillips translation and the amplified translation reads uh, hence when he christ entered into the world he said sacrifices and offerings you have not desires, but desired, but instead you have made ready for me a body for offer. So he was, he was given a body to offer it to God to atone for our sins. Um, and then uh, this is a continuation of the creed, which reads, For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. This is part of the creed, uh, Nicene Creed. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. So, so that he became man, so that he could die. Now, this is the plan which we covered in um, in Psalm uh, two seven. That this is the reason why uh, he came down to earth. This is the reason why he's the Anointed One, because he offered to die. For, uh, for the salvation of men. Uh, in Romans 3.25 it reads, For God sent Jesus Christ to take the punishment for our sins and to end all God's anger against us. He used God's bl blood, he used Christ's blood and our faith as a means of saving us from his wrath. In this way, he was being entirely fair, even though he did not punish those who sinned in former times, for he was looking forward to a time when Christ would come and take away those sins. So this slow, this would, he was the lamb that was slain at the foundation of the world. 
he was slain. It was made manifest some 2,000 years ago, but it was operative retrospectively currently and currently and forward, forward looking to to this to us as well. Uh, that's how powerful this sacrifice was. Um, it was a certainty it could not fail, and it did not fail. Now we know that, um, and now this trans this was the uh, living uh, translation. The expanded translation reads, and God sent, appointed, presented him to die in our place and take away our sins as a sacrifice of atonement and as the mercy seat, or as the mercy seat, uh, as a propitiation. It implies an atoning sacrifice that turns away divine wrath. Uh, the, and then, and because he died in our place or in our stead, we being logical, we now must live the life of the deceased. Because he lived, he took our place and died for us when, when we should have died. So we should take his life and live the way that he lives. Um, and and the argument here is that we are, it's not possible for a person to have a double life. You can't have two identical existences. We have one life. So our life is, is gone, is dead. So the life that is living is his life. So we take that life. So he took our, he died in our state and we live in him. So that, that's how it works. So we must live his life, a sin, live sinless life, a holy and pure life, though not perfectly, yeah, because we can't be perfect, and, but we must at the very least strive to do so, strive to attain perfection. This we are obliged to do as a duty. And in Colossians 1.20, it reads, um, And through him God has brought all things back to himself, all things to himself, things on earth and things in heaven. God made made peace through the blood of Christ's death on the cross. Um, so he died for us and he was reconciling us to back to he used his son as a sacrifice to reconcile us back to to him because we sinned. And we know that the price, the penalty, the the wages of death of sin is is death. He died for us. But the hell could not hold him because he was sinless. Um, so now this is Jesus talking about us, talking about us, um, what's, what's on earth. He says, they don't belong to the world just as I don't belong to the world. Make them ready for the, your service through your truth, your teaching. Uh, I have sent them into the world just as you sent me into the world. For their sake, I am making myself ready to serve so that they can be ready for the service, uh, the truth. In Acts 1, 8, it reads, And when the Holy Spirit comes to you, you will receive power. You will be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in every part of the world to the ends of the earth. In uh, Luke 24, 46, uh, verses 46 to 48, it reads, he said to them, it is written that the Christ, the Messiah, would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that a change of hearts and lives, and that a change of hearts and lives, and um, forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations starting in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Now he's talking to the yeah, to the Hebrew people. So they are, the Hebrew people have now been sent on an assignment with the, the Holy Spirit to take the message and the gospel to, to uh, throughout the whole earth. And in John twenty twenty one says, um, then Jesus said to them again, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, I now send you. And the, the gift of peace, he says, peace be with you, is an attitude of mind, is a peace, uh, some, it's a peace of mind, it's um, 
a, a, a totally balanced mind. Therefore, a, a gift is therefore primarily something internal, mental, psychological in the heart, for that is where peace exists, resides, uh, especially the peace with God of a kind the Lord enjoyed himself, the peace of it all from the Holy Spirit. So this is the peace he gave them. So don't be disturbed, don't be frightened, just go out calmly and do what you have to do. Uh, I am with you until the end of the earth, end of time. In Matthew 28, 18 to 20, the reason Jesus came to them and said, All power is in heaven and on, and on earth is given to me. So go and make all the people in the world, the nations, uh, go and make followers of all the people in the world. We have baptized them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have taught and I will be with you always until the end of this age. Um, Acts 26 um, verses 16 to 18 and it reads, Stand up. This is why I have come to you today. I have chosen you to be my servant and my witness. You will tell people the things that you have seen and the things that I will show you. I will keep you safe from your own people. These are the Jews who are persecuting them, uh, who wanted to hang on with, uh, hang on to legalism, legalism and um, had problems with the freedom of um, the um, of the doctrine of the faith and also that the Gentiles of your own people and also from the Gentiles I'm sending you to them to open their eyes so that they may turn away from darkness to the light away from the power of Satan and to God then their sins can be forgiven and they can have peace and those people who have been made holy uh, been made holy and they can have a place with those people who have been made holy in me. Um, in Acts 3, 25-26 it reads, You are descendants of the prophets. You have received the agreement God made with the ancestors. He said to your father Abraham, Through, you, through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. God has raised up his servant, Jesus and sent him to you first um, to bless you by turning each of you away from doing evil uh, from doing evil so here we we have a situation where the promise was made to Abraham and salvation was going to come through the Jews and the Jews were yeah salvation was going to come through the Jews that's Jesus Christ and Jesus was going to teach the the, the, the Hebrew people um, about the faith the faith and then he in turn sends the Hebrews now to the rest of the world to tell them about the good news so I know there have been there are views that say that the Hebrews are done for etc etc that is not so they were they continued to Paul is all about that. Peter, all the disciples, apostles, yes, they were taking the message to the world. Paul was especially assigned uh, to to teach the Gentiles, but eventually, uh, even the uh, Peter and all the others were teaching the Hebrews. They went went on to teach other. Uh, non-Hebrews and Hebrews and this thing continues on and on until it, the whole gospel reaches the whole world everywhere where the Hebrew people are and those whom they have converted so now so through your descendants uh, all the nations of the earth will be blessed yes uh, that is through uh, Yeshaya and through the Hebrew people the Lord said to Abraham leave your country your relatives and your and your father and go to the land I will show you Canaan I will make you a great nation and I will bless you I will make you I will make you famous and you will be a blessing to others I will bless those who bless you and I'll place a curse on those who harm you and all the people of uh, on the earth will be blessed through you so this is what is happening um, 
Yeshaya's descendants. Um, I will give you many descendants. This is the um, promise made in Genesis 26, 24. Uh, he's talking about the promise to Abraham uh, as hard to count as the stars in the sky and I will give them all these lands. Uh, through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. A two-pronged approach. Um, the Israelites now, the, the Hebrews now have been sent forth to preach the word, and they are going to be as many as the stars. Now, that's a promise. But you cannot count them because they do not constitute a nation. Right now, you can't say that they are Americans or they are Russians and they are 500 million or they are 1 billion. No, there are always minorities in those nations and in those peoples, in those tribes, tribes in those tongues. They are, when they are amalgamated and brought together, then that's when the, uh, their number will, be, will amaze everybody how many Hebrew people they are. Not counting the people they have converted in the Gentile states, the Gentile nations. So, in Deuteronomy 30, uh, verses 1 to 3, it reads, When all these blessings, this is what is, uh, this is uh, Moses speaking, um, I have described, happened to you, and the Lord your God has sent you away to other nations. Think about these things then you and your children will return to the Lord your God and you will obey him with your whole being in everything I am commanding you today. Then the Lord your God will give you back your freedom. He will feel sorry for you and he will bring you back from the nations where he has scattered you. So this promise was made very early. Isaiah was basically confirming something that Moses had already spoken of. Um, and when all these things have come upon you, the, the applicate, this is the amplified version, when all these things have come upon you, uh, the blessings and the curses which I have set before you, you shall call them to mind, you shall recall them to mind, uh, in the nations where you will have been scattered, and you um, and you think about all these things uh, that you have done wrong, and then when you repented, I will, I shall return, and shall return to the Lord your God. You shall return to the Lord your God and obey His voice according to all that I command you today, and you and your children, and all your um, with all your mind and your heart, and with all your being, and you shall return to the Lord your God and obey his voice according to all that I command you today, you and your children, with all your mind, heart, and with all your being, then the Lord God will restore your fortunes and have compassion upon you and will gather you again from all the nations where he has scattered you. Now, this has not happened. It is about to happen. In the, uh, it's coming up shortly. Um, but what we know, what is clear, is the Hebrew people don't have a nation state. They're scattered amongst the nations, the peoples, the tribes, and the tongues throughout the world. They have not been regathered. In Isaiah 61, verses 5 to 7, it reads, um, Foreigners will come to tend your sheep. People from other countries uh, will tend your fields and vineyards. You shall be called priests of the Lord. You will be named the servants, ministers of our God. You will have riches from all the nations on earth, and you will take pride in them. Um, instead of being ashamed, you will receive twice as much wealth, uh, a double portion. Instead of being disgraced, you will be happy because of what um, they receive. They will receive a double share of the land, so their happiness will continue forever, everlasting joy. So this is a promise that is made to the Hebrews, that when, when he's established them, all the other nations will come and will come and serve them. And they will they are going to leave those nations with much wealth. And I think this alludes to the second exodus, uh, which is coming up shortly. And then <clears throat> Isaiah 66, 19 to 21, it reads, I will put a mark on some of the people and I will send some of 
those saved people, these are the people who were sent out to the nations, to Tashish, Lut, Tubo, etc., Greece, uh, faraway lands. These people, uh, these people have never heard about what I have done, uh, nor seen my glory. So the saved people um, would tell the nations, the people who were sent out on this mission, about, tell these people about my glory, and they will uh, bring all, and they will bring all your fellow Yasha allies, Israelites. Um, from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord. Your fellow Israelites who come on horses, donkeys, camels, uh, chariots, uh, using all modes of transportation, and they will be like the grain offering that the Lord, um, they will be like the grain sub offerings that the Lord bring in clean, pure containers. To the temple, says the Lord, I will choose even some of these people to be priests and Levites, says the Lord your God. Um, I have always been inclined to read that last 21 to mean that it will also it may also include the Gentiles who will serve as priests and Levites. Um, and the voice the voice translation. And then it, it, it voice translation says pretty much the same thing, but in 21 it says, and out of those who return, yeah, out of those who return, would, would they come back with uh, the Israelites? I think this, this is where I'm getting this in double meaning. Um, I will make peace out of those who return. I think he's, he's talking about the Hebrews, actually. I, I will make priests and Levites. This is my word to you. So now this promise of uh, sending the Hebrews to the among the nations was confirmed very early in the history of the Hebrew people. In Exodus 15, it says, And then they came to Elam, and there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Now the seventy palm trees are the seventy nations, and the seven springs of water are the twelve tribes of Yashael. And these are the people who are saying, and they are watering these palm trees, and you can see how they are growing. Uh, the palm trees need water, so they are going to be watered by the Hebrew people, and this is the state and the position that we are in at the moment. The Hebrew people are watering the palm trees and themselves. In they are the they, they are the water they are watering the, the 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 Gentiles in their various nations in their tribes and tongues and um, peoples throughout the world and this was something that was alluded to very early in their history that this is what's going to happen they were going to be scattered among the peoples the the nations and we know that there are seventy nations if you go to uh, Genesis uh, 10, I think. Yeah, we talk about 70. Um, we talk about 70, uh, <clears throat> 70 nations at the time who were assigned a, 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 a God. And we also know that whilst we now talk about 270 something, most we know that uh, the G uh, Japheth's descendants have colonized and are now living in the tents of the Shemites. And this week and it's evidenced in North America, South America. We know about that in, in um, Australia. We know about that in New Zealand. And they have tried various other attempts to do this. And this is in keeping with the promise or the, the prayer that was prayed by Noah in um, is it Genesis 9, when he says he would want, uh, he prayed to Japheth's um, God that he be allowed, to, that he he um, take over the tents of Shem, and he's done that. And not only that, we know that this uh, Japheth has gone even so far as trying to colonize um, Ham in North Africa. He's been trying to 
to to dominate the whole world by using various uh, um, strategies. Uh, and th 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 so basically, I think as far as God is concerned, if you were to look at the whole world, he sees 70 nations, how he, um, we see 270, but he knows what he's, he's talking about. So there are 70 nations, so let's go with that. But what we do know is that Japheth has, has uh, taken over the land of Shem, including Yasha, Israel, in the, in the so-called Middle East. Um, and then in Revelation, uh, this is the climax of it all. In Revelation 5, verses 6 to 10, it reads, uh, Then I saw a lamb in the center of the throne, in the middle of the four living creatures and the elders. Um, the lamb, as if, and he saw the lamb as if it had been killed, slaughtered, slain. He had seven horns and seven eyes of the God's spirits, which are the seven spirits of God. And uh, that was sent into all the world. That's the Holy Spirit that was working with the Hebrew people in um, taking the message throughout the world, the good news. The lamb, the lamb came up and took the scroll from the right hand of, of the one sitting on the throne. Uh, when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders bowed down uh, before the lamb. Each of them had a harp and golden bowls full of uh, incense. And they are the prayers of God's holy people. And they all sang a new song to the Lamb. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal because you have killed, you were killed, slain uh, with the blood. And with the blood of your death, uh, you bought, ransomed, purchased, redeemed people for God from every tribe, language, people and nation you made made uh, you made them to be a kingdom of priests for our god and they will reign and they will reign on the earth and uh, this is part one of um, um some two verse eight I uh, will continue uh, in a little while to discuss or to teach on what God expects the ransomed people, how he expects the ransomed people to behave um, um, as we speak, especially in view of the, the end that is so, so near. So on this point, uh, I'd like to thank you and uh, God may God bless you. We will continue in a little while.